On the 9th of March, 1946, Bolton Wanderers faced Stoke City at their Burnden Park Stadium in the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. After the end of World War II, supporters across the country were keen to make up for lost time and return to the grounds. Burnden Park had been home to Bolton since 1895, but whilst not being directly bombed, it was still affected by the war. Parts of Burnden Park had been requisitioned by the army during the conflict for storage and had not yet been returned to full use. As a result, all fans entering the game would have to use the same turnstiles on one side of the stadium, naturally leading to a bottleneck. Along with the escapism that football bought, many fans wanted to attend the game so that they could witness the great Stanley Matthews in the flesh. The stadium had a capacity of around 75,000, and authorities expected 55,000 to turn up. However, in the end, around 85,000 supporters were estimated to be in attendance. In this era, when going to a game, fans would simply pay for admission at the turnstiles rather than pre-booking tickets. With so many supporters entering the ground, it became more and more packed, and with 20 minutes until kickoff, a decision was made to close the turnstiles and stop the supporters coming in. However, this did not work as desired. Many fans climbed over the turnstiles and fences, and the gate would end up opening with fans pouring through there as well. As more and more supporters entered the railway end, the pressure became greater and greater. Soon after kickoff, fans fell through the barriers and onto the pitch. The game was abandoned as supporters were ushered off. The game restarted before a local police officer came onto the pitch and spoke to the referee to inform him there had been a fatality. After a discussion between the referee and two captains, both teams left the pitch. The bodies of the deceased were placed on the side of the pitch and covered with jackets. Some so close to the pitch that new touchlines out of sawdust had to be put in place. It was decided that the game be continued. The reason for this decision was down to a number of factors. One that authorities feared further disruption and crowd trouble if the game was abandoned, as well as the lack of communication facilities in the ground and the fact that following the horrors of World War II, many people had become desensitised to scenes of death. The game kicked off again, with many in the crowd completely unaware of what had occurred. The two teams played out the game, with corpses surrounding them on the touchlines. At half-time, the sides immediately switched halves and kicked off straight away. After the game, the deceased were taken away, and throughout the night, the news broke out across Bolton, as people phoned up the police to see if their relatives had survived. Stanley Matthews later said he was sickened that the game had been allowed to continue when he discovered the extent of the tragedy, and made a donation to a fund set up to help those affected by the disaster. Overall, 33 people were killed, the youngest of which was 14-year-old Harry Birtwistle. Following the disaster, action was called for. A report by Melwyn Hughes said that stricter controls over large crowds were required. It was agreed that grounds of capacities of greater than 10,000 should be inspected by local authorities, and safety limits put in place for grounds of capacities greater than 25,000. Along with this, it was recommended that turnstiles mechanically record the amount of fans coming into the ground, and internal telephone systems be put in place in stadiums to improve communication. Later in 1946, England and Scotland played a friendly to raise money for a disaster's victims, with the game at Main Road raising around £12,000, the equivalent of around £388,000 in today's money. A plaque was placed in memory of the victims lost outside Burden Park in 1992. When Bolton moved grounds, the plaque was moved to the wall of a supermarket that was placed where Burden Park once stood.